unveiling postmodernism's grand narrative rejection, will explore its roots, key proponents, influences on society and art, along with the debates stirring around this mid-20th century offshoot of modernism. Diving right into the thick of things, we find ourselves in the midst of postmodernism, a philosophical twist that began percolating in the mid-20th century. Widely considered as a response to the ideologies and aesthetics of modernism, postmodernism tends to critique grand, overarching narratives, replacing them with a more pluralistic, relativistic worldview. Imagine this contrast as an architectural standoff, a modernist skyscraper standing tall, representing control, rationality, even anonymity, facing off against the eclectic, fragmented forms of the Seattle Public Library, a postmodernist landmark. Postmodernism champions variety over singularity, embracing different perspectives. It's a move away from the absolute, the universal. Rather, it invites the multiplicity of truths, interlinking threads of stories, beliefs, and cultures. Key here is a shift in understanding. The reinterpretation of reality, art, literature, and cultural phenomena are recognized not as fixed entities, but as fluid, subject to constant change. Because in postmodernism, there isn't one truth, there are many. As the smoke from World War II began to clear, the world found itself in disarray. People everywhere braved disillusionment and existential crises, their once steadfast beliefs in universal truths shaken to the core. This wave of skepticism spurred a dramatic shift in philosophical thought, where the focus shifted from objective realities to subjective personal experiences. What mattered now were individual interpretations, personal perspectives that rejected any singular overarching narratives. We saw the crumbling of the erstwhile dominant modernist pursuit of universal truths, paving the path for a new philosophy, postmodernism. Postmodernist thought emphasized the importance of individual perspectives, accepting an almost dizzying plurality of truths over a monolithic, absolute reality. These philosophies disrupted the linear pursuit of knowledge, seeding a belief in a continuum of truths, each shaped by personal experiences and interpretations. We thus entered an era of postmodernism, a philosophical realm that celebrated diversity over singularity, that nurtured a multitude of individual truths, questions the existence of objective knowledge, fostering a more dynamic, eclectic understanding of our world. Unveiling another layer of postmodernism, our attention turns to Jean-Francois Lyotard, remembered for his rebellion against grand narratives, preferring the authenticity of localized individual stories. Lyotard disrupted conventional thought, casting doubt on large overarching explanations used to simplify complex phenomena. He proposed that these meta-narratives were too homogenous to adequately depict the complexities of reality and advocated for the recognition of our unique experiences and interpretations. To visualize the practical implications of this theory, picture how we view history. If guided by postmodernism, history wouldn't be seen as a single universally applicable narrative, but instead a tapestry of unique stories, each thread woven with its own reality and importance. The focus shifts to the individual threads, their distinct colors embracing the spectrum of human experience over a single color. Lyotard's belief in the importance of individual narratives introduces a newfound respect for the diversity and complexity of human experiences. This reshapes our approach towards knowledge and truth, encouraging a critical perspective and marking a significant departure from the homogeneity of grand narratives and singular truths. Consider Jacques Derrida a philosopher who discarded the idea of singular, fixed meanings in texts. Instead, he invited us to explore their inherent inconsistencies. Now, envision the fairy tale Little Red Riding Hood. Our prime suspect, the wolf, typically is a blatant symbol of danger under a straightforward lens. But what if we were to deconstruct this narrative? We might perceive the wolf also as an embodiment of cunning, thereby bringing forth an additional layer of complexity to this simple tale. So when scrutinizing Little Red Riding Hood through Dorita's principle of deconstruction, we can see this tale evolve, moving past its immediate moral. It unravels a spectrum of meanings that provide insights into not only human nature, but also societal norms. This invites us to realize that deconstruction dispels the notion of singular truths, 
revealing instead the multifaceted truths inherent within our narratives. Welcome to the labyrinth of postmodern thought, where every path you choose promises a unique perspective. The key to comprehending Michel Foucault's philosophy lies in his power knowledge concept. He posits that knowledge doesn't simply exist, but is intimately tied to power structures. In this equation, knowledge isn't discovered or passed down. Instead, it emerges from and is shaped by power relations. Think of it as a cyclical process where knowledge is both a product and progenitor of power. This dynamic has profound implications for societal norms and individual perceptions, transforming our conventional understanding of how information is structured and disseminated. Now let's delve into the heart of Foucault's theory on power knowledge dynamics. Distilled to essence, it suggests a complex dance between power and knowledge, where the pair is mutually constitutive. Authority in this scenario isn't just about maintaining control, but influencing discourse and consequently shaping knowledge. This idea may sound abstract until we consider the role of educational curriculums. Here, accepted truths are encoded and worldviews are unconsciously molded. By extension, societal perceptions become structured, guided by the implicit hands of those who hold the reins over information. This underlines Foucault's central thesis of knowledge as a construction shaped by power dynamics, leading to preconceived ideologies and complexities in societal frameworks. In postmodern theory, Jean Baudrillard introduced a groundbreaking concept known as hyperreality. This transcends the familiar threshold of reality and the simulated to a realm where the two blend so effortlessly that it becomes impossible to discern one from the other. Picture this. You find yourself in an orchestration so precise and convincing, it mirrors the real world, yet it's not. Here, the real has been replaced by its superior counterfeit uncannily identical to its original. This chillingly surreal concept springs from the leaps and bounds our world has made in technology and media. As we engage more with the digital domain, our experiences are diligently replicated, even usurped by the manufactured realities they inspire. From deep fakes to virtual realities and artificial intelligence, the line between the real and fabricated blurs as we delve deeper into hyper-reality. Now ponder The Truman Show. The film character, Truman, and the viewers are unwittingly plunged into hyper-reality's vortex, where reality is skillfully replaced by the orchestrated. This high-definition mirror of the postmodern world underscores the pressing issues we face in our digitally saturated society, the fragility of truth and the measure of reality. Plunging into the realm of art, we find postmodernism questioning, even skewering traditional genre boundaries. In literature and art, it champions a playful approach, reveling in paradoxes and contradictions. Thomas Pynchon's The Crying of Lot 49, a literary classic, serves as a fitting illustration. It resists categorization, embraces narrative play, and employs a peculiar brand of humor that typifies the postmodern aesthetics. The elastic, almost amoebic boundaries of postmodernism encompass an array of artistic strategies like parody, bricolage, and pastiche. Together, these techniques amplify the genre's appeal, contributing to its widespread acceptance. A noteworthy practitioner is Andy Warhol, whose pop art adopted the bricolage method. His creations blurred the lines between high and low culture, leaving us questioning the binary classification of art forms. His work encapsulates the philosophy's rejection of cultural hierarchy, marking a significant departure from convention. Along with that, the concept of the death of the author hits at the heart of how we interpret postmodern works, reshaping our relationship with meaning and authorship. So in postmodernism, there are no finite interpretations, but rather an ever-broadening landscape of potential signs and symbolisms. Postmodernism, with its multiplicity of truths, welcomes relativism, a concept that eschews universally accepted truths, stirs heated debates regarding moral and societal norms. Rather than accepting a shared ethical platform, postmodernism tolerates divergent ethical perspectives, transforming the face of discourse, and calling for a re-examination of societal moral foundations. This interplay dramatizes and fuels the science wars, a discourse unraveled between the established scientific stalwarts and the postmodern skeptics. Undergirding this dichotomy is the infamous Sokal Affair, 
1996, which saw the acceptance of a hoax article by an academic journal, surfacing the ideological gulf between stringent scientific precision and the laissez-faire acceptance of postmodern narratives. The crucial question sprouting from these philosophical crossroads revolves around the nature of truth. Is it universal, as propounded by science or subjective, as postmodernism provocatively suggests, molded by societal context and individual perspectives? Let this invite you to introspect the pull and push between the objective and the subjective, a trial by fire at the heart of knowledge and truth. As we explore further, postmodernism takes the stage in today's media and cultural practices, serving as an influential force shaping narratives and aesthetics. For instance, in TV series like The Simpsons, Black Mirror, Rick and Morty, and Stranger Things, we see the reflections of postmodern complexities. Here, paradoxes play out, pastiche becomes commonplace, and intertextuality is the norm, underlining the cross-connections and blurred boundaries that are postmodernism's hallmarks. Simultaneously, popular culture, memes, even viral challenges serve as platforms for its expression, embodying this intricate interplay. In parallel, postmodernism leaves a distinct imprint on contemporary academic discourse. Influencing research and discussions across diverse disciplines, it casts a novel lens on our understanding of truth and reality. No longer viewed as fixed entities, these concepts become subject to analysis anchored in the fragmented narratives of the digital world and social media. In this light, plurality finds favor, breaking down singular viewpoints, and fostering a milieu that embraces diverse narratives. In this ever-evolving landscape, postmodernism emerges as a potent philosophy, playing a key role in shaping the diction and direction of global discourse. Postmodernism, emerging in the mid-20th century, swept aside notions of universal truths, advocating instead a multitude of narratives shaped by diverse perspectives. The philosopher's stone here is deconstruction, a magnifying glass examining the bones of narratives, prompting critical analysis of both form and content. This philosophy brings forth the understanding that truths aren't monolithic or universally applicable. Rather, they are diverse, complex, and deeply subjective. This radical departure from classical thought doesn't stop at questioning collective realities, but also dives into the realm of ethics. When you topple the grand edifice of universally accepted ethics, you make room for culture-specific morality and subjective standards, leading to a constant reassessment of accepted norms and beliefs. The imprint of postmodernism isn't confined to theoretical spheres. It permeates our literature, our art, and the social sciences, persistently adding depth to our interpretations. The essence of postmodern thought lies in the vibrant mosaic of diverse narratives, each piece replete with its own version of truth, challenging homogeneity and instead celebrating diversity, a sentiment that is increasingly relevant in today's interconnected world.